leverage in technology to add to that nitin is an expert in understanding the online modus operandi of the propaganda theory adopted by terrorists criminals and gang members and the negative connotations attached to it and used for recruitment and ideology propagation it is interesting to note that mr nitin builds real time reports for government and intelligence agencies across the globe to unravel terrorist activities criminal activities and drug war fake news leading to violence and social unrest i think now is the time to listen to our speaker mr nitin nathyar over to you sir uh thank you very much sir uh, and a very good morning to all of you uh, all uh, good morning to all the organizers all the participants and you know uh, to uh, to our partner quicksoft who have given us this opportunity to present our solution and discuss the ways uh, in which the technology can empower the analysts across law enforcement agencies uh, across the world uh, for human behavior analysis now to uh now to start uh, with the presentation and uh, uh, the content we want to share with the audience i would like to hand over my you know uh, uh, my the session for few minutes to uh, my colleague uh, tal greenberg who is based out of israel uh, since uh, i guess not everyone of uh, of you here are familiar with voyager labs uh, so i will be taking a couple of minutes to share my screen with tal and then he will give us a little brief about the company and then we can deep dive into you know uh, the magic which the technology in combination with human behavior analysis can create uh, for investigation purposes so tal uh, all over to you for uh, starting uh, and giving a brief on the company okay can you hear me thank you nitin yeah. and it is a pleasure to be with all of you this morning and to present uh, some of our capabilities uh, of our company can you all see my screen i uh, guess okay so um well what i really want to do is just quickly pre introduce Voyager Labs and what we do, and then uh, we'll have here some uh, dedicated, tailored uh, solutions uh, that are more uh, probably relevant uh, for the audience that is here this morning. So, what Voyager Labs, what we really are, is uh, the company was founded uh, eight years ago about people <clears throat> by people from different uh, public safety sectors and intelligence units in uh, Israel. And they had uh, a vision in mind to be able to analyze human behavior on a, the internet or through social media. And what do I mean by that is because the world has become so inclined to use the internet and use social media and everybody's on it and there's so much data out there, but not only social media, like on the internet, everybody uses the internet today for so many things for just uh, ordering out, buying tickets, and on and on and on. And the, the list is endless of the use of in the internet, and also more, uh, even more so, social media. Uh, and it has uh, become so uh, frequent that everyone really has some, you know, digital fingerprint, you could say, in the in the internet, in social media, in this domain. And what we have been able to do is to find, locate, and understand that uh, digital fingerprint and then compare it between different human behaviors uh, to see if people are inclined to behave this way or that way. You know, they have a tendency towards terrorism, for example, or for uh, drug trafficking and so on. So this is the expertise of the, uh, the, the company just in a few sentences. So like I said, our technology is really a pioneering disruptive AI based, and that is important because the, the, to be able to crunch all this data, you need to have big and strong analytical capabilities, and this is only doable through AI. 
And uh, we apply the AI and the, and the data in order to find those patterns, like I said, those different human behavioral patterns uh, within the data. Uh, our workforce uh, uh, includes people from all over the world. We have a research, AI research lab in one of the major universities in, in Israel. And we also have offices all over the world, as you are uh, aware, also in uh, India as well. Uh, we, we aim our uh, clients that we think we are more uh, leaning towards public safety, towards police forces, intelligence units. That is where the, the DNA of this company is. And that's where we are uh, doing most of our work and our best results uh, come from there. So I think that uh, as far as uh, you guys, this is very uh, relevant for all of you as well. And investment, as you can see here also, just to get a taste, there's already quite a lot of money invested in the company. And actually, the company is not in the investing stages anymore, but in expansion and growing sales and things like that. So not a small startup anymore, but a, a growing a company to becoming the next, uh, the next big thing. So a few words on the technology that we have um, and how this actually comes to pass. So like I said, there is an ocean of data out there, uh, unstructured called as well, big data. And you can think about it, how much data is there in the internet, in websites, on news, on blogs, on forums, on YouTube, on Pinterest, on Facebook, on Twitter, and all these places have so much data on there. And one of the challenges is that it's all unstructured. I mean, it's all in different formats and forms. But what if you could have one place that could analyze all of this data together and come out with some meaningful uh, uh, idea for some meaningful intelligence? Hold on, let me try to see if I can reshare my screen because then it's not being shared. Um, there is an ocean of data out there, of unstructured data, and we are able to collect it, analyze it, and understand the behavior in it. So, for example, um, <clears throat> like I gave before, drug trafficking or human trafficking is a pattern that you can detect within the data. If you have enough information as our solution has, then you can see how quickly and easily uh, you can analyze and detect uh, people that are inclined to that behavior. So if you have, for example, you'll see later, you'll have example, a, a thousand people you want to understand which one may be prone to some specific behavior, then you could have them assess. This is the first product that we offer, it's called Voyager Check, and you can see it here. And this product allows you to assess those people, like a thousand people in just a minute, and to understand who has like inclination to, like I said, drug trafficking or to a, terrorism and things like that. After that, the second platform that we offer is Voyager Analytics, and it is more um, a deep dive analysis of a person, of his surroundings, of what he says, of what he posts, of his social circles, of his different friends, and even information that is not retrievable, or you cannot, is a like hidden information, the system can collect that as well and analyze it also. Uh, and the third product is Voyager Vision. It is the uh, analyzing and understanding of images, because today more and more things are happening through pictures and people are sharing images and there's everything is on film almost. Every street corner today almost has some camera, then all the analytics of video can also be done to generate meaningful insights. Not, not only who is in the video, but also what is the behavior, what is happening in those uh, videos. So this is what we do in kind of in a quick uh, introduction. 
We take all this information, all the data off the uh, internet and social media. We analyze it through our AI engines to give it, to see what patterns are in the data. And then we give, in the end of the day, meaningful insights to our end users because without meaningful intelligence, this whole process is fruitless. So uh, I hope uh, you <clears throat> enjoy uh, the rest of this uh, webinar today as well, and uh, really uh, uh, as an eye opener for some uh, technologies uh, that you can use for your day-to-day uh, -day work. And I will give back the control to Nitin for the rest of this uh, presentation. And uh, happy to be with you today. Uh, thank you so much, Tal. Uh, for these great insights and and now let me share my screen with you and we can start deep diving into the technology so i hope my screen is available to anybody so so before we start deep diving into you know the technology i just want to say a few things one uh, i purposely put my camera off uh, so that I just want to use uh, some bandwidth for, you know, when we run live applications, uh, since we are using these, these are the unusual times and we are using some, uh, you know, uh, domestic broadband, broadbands. Okay, so before we move on and, you know, start understanding how we are going up or how the world is, you know, uh, using technology and integrating technology with the domain and the domain here is uh, behavior analysis uh, before i go into it i just want to uh, I'll, uh, you know throw in three questions and probably at the end of the session when we are done uh, we'll be able to you know uh, 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 we'll be able to ponder upon or or some of uh, the participants can give their you know uh, insights on what they think on these questions so my first question is you know was the as all of us uh, aware about uh, blue whale game that came and you know incited people to do um, uh, as last end of the game to commit suicide so was the blue game blue whale game a project by some bad actors uh, you know uh, who are doing some cheap or malicious uh, activity or was it a well planned state sponsored experiment to study and control human behavior remotely so was it an experiment from uh, you know some rich uh, countries or you know some rogue state uh, to understand human behavior or if that can be you know uh, tweet around or uh, or in these you know today's usual, unusual times with so many conspiracy theories around uh, uh, you know it's very important to understand uh, what will happen to all of us once this uh, covid 19 situation ends and we are back to normal uh, will we be back to normal so that's another question and the third question would be you know uh, a few years back it was you know great trend where as you know, social online media, social media networks, uh, YouTube, the, the most of the, if some of the questions that were, you know, top trending in YouTube were, you know, uh, or, or, or the Google, uh, uh, people were trending in Google, was things like cheap tickets to Syria. So why were people searching for things like cheap tickets to Syria? Or who was searching for them? Obviously, nobody was searching for vacation, but people were searching. So whatever we think and we feel, the world will not remain the same post COVID-19. Crime and crime patterns probably will not remain the same. And thus, I'm sure the human behavior will not remain the same. Or I don't know, maybe it will remain the same. So let us discuss, uh, you know, how for the future we want to, we want to kind of, you know, analyze and use uh, the technology to understand human behavior. Because the biggest challenge is the human uh, the, uh, the scientists are going to face is one, the amount of data that is streaming in uh, because of the digitalized world we live in today. People spend more time online than offline. So there's a lot of data and analysts are obviously overwhelmed with that data. Second, uh, with uh, data privacy and all uh, global social networking companies do not share data very easily, even with law enforcement agencies. Uh, there's a lot of process that goes on and once if they do um, because most of the time when you know uh, somebody does a crime or wants to hide his identity it's very easy to go and deactivate your account after doing some you know malicious activity and it takes a long long time probably through courts and warrants and negotiations to you know access if uh, given uh, by the law enforcement agent agencies to uh, understand and then analyze the data uh, of the account and you know uh, 
and and we have seen you know a lot of uh, examples here in for example a, a very famous uh, a big uh, social media network inside uh, you know shared uh, uh, a profile uh, who has been deactivated from the network uh, uh, a profile for example with 1000 friends and um, an active profile for about 5 years the social networking sites will share a a pdf bunch of about 12000 uh, pages with the uh, law enforcement agency and it's almost you know unimaginable to analyze that kind of document uh, for an investig ongoing investigation and when there are time pressures so for this to uh, to, to to come out from all of this uh, and 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 create a uh, a solution and propose a solution wherein uh, uh, you know uh, the technology with human behavior analysis gets integrated and empowers the analyst to do their deep dive investigations uh, we 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 give you a, a three way approach which you know uh, 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 we have proposed so when before i move on to three way approach uh, so these are some of the factors where there are uh, human behavior analysis uh, will give output when uh, through the use of technology like if we are uh, analyzing a uh, an individual uh, so it would be interesting to know who who would be the top connections of an individual uh, who would be the mediators within the social environment of those individuals what are their hidden identities available because most of the time when we get stuck is the, the first question that comes is what if the target you are analyzing or analyzing has no social uh, media or so, you know digital presence what happens so that's a pertinent a very important question but the answer to that is uh, we may like it or we may not like it even if i if i do not have an account but it's impossible you know uh, i have full control of what i you know share in public but i have zero control on what people who are close to me a part of my social circle uh, share about me who tags me uh, you know people share my photo people tag me if i go to a party and uh, in today's world if we are uh, you know if, if i take an example of you know uh, extremism and radicalism uh, social media is the very you know one of the most popular and one of the most important uh, uh, place for the people or uh, bad actors to be in so so how do we uh, unravel these high hidden identities uh, clusters relationship essence are these business relationships are these personal relationships uh, so all these are part of you know these are the parameters of the inputs which a human behavior scientist will analyze but with the kind of data we have uh, we need technology uh, okay so what now we are here we are proposing a three phase approach wherein we want choosing the technology and human behavior concept uh we want to threat uh, you know detect the threat uh, which is obviously present uh, online and then from that threat we want to identify the real life identities and if possible the locations and if possible can content uh, control content and then once we do that can we uh, you know uh, use the methods or the tactical methods to intercept those uh, people uh, or those profiles or those accounts so now we have so this is a three phase approach each phase is uh, you know is, is unique to itself and uh, based on the time limits we have for today uh, we will be focusing on phase 1 now phase 1 talks about identifying malicious profiles groups and topics uh, across the internet people groups or organizations are sharing uh, again expose direct and indirect relationships find key influences within those groups and monitor those groups now all this will happen through technology but at the end of the technology some intelligent algorithms which will define you know the human behavior analysis analysis will need to run to identify uh, all these information so so by the end of analyzing this what we are trying to achieve is detect expression of alarming ideologies if any uh, within those content media or videos being shared once we detect those ideologies and content or data uh, how do we uh, can we identify the people who are the top contributors or top influencers uh, within within that data set and then the presentation is gone uh, can you please so based on the integration of technology and and, and the human behavior science uh, what can we reach out what are the final objectives so these are some high level objectives uh, and and, and if i talk about from pure investigative terms for example uh, what kind of answers probably i am looking for from these kind of analysis and using technology for example if it's a fiadin kind of a societal attack happened 
uh, so who probably was the mentor uh, or you know which organization he was uh, in or aligned you aligned to or who were uh, kind of uh, supporting him over to your over and uh, and as you can see there are some eight nine questions i have just framed out for an example to show that these are the questions which probably law enforcement agencies and analysts wants answers before you know uh, something happens so so how how technology will support this will we are going to uh, now uh, understand this now to understand this we have three sets of product as in initially tal has explained it uh, and i will just go a little deep down on that the first of the uh, plan that helps investigator analyze human behavior is voyager analytics which is nothing but analysis platform for investigator which allows uh, you know uh, the analyst to harness publicly available unstructured data across uh, all the social media networks that are available today for the reason to reveal deep actionable insights on targets groups and individuals and most important to them uh, understand the intricate in intricate uh, interplay between them so what do i mean about it you know if the individual or a group or an organization is using social media for example uh, to propagate its ideology it plays on human behavior of individual uh, to 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 attract so that uh, to attract them to you know uh, give them some uh, kind of uh, information and then try to convert them into uh, or uh, you know motivate them for some kind of radical uh, or extremist ideology now the analysis analysis have shown that it can take place from you know anywhere from about uh, 10 months to 3 years for any uh, potential recruiter or propagator to you know fully convert uh, 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 an individual who is interested in these kind of activities or to train him or motivate him so there is a mental model that is working uh, on a human behavior of an individual to motivate him now this platform gives uh, you know uh, an analyst that capability to understand if that process is happening can we stop in uh, stop that happening from that moment and we'll explain uh, this to you through a use case study now what i'm talking about here is there are two mental mental models and they are at same level one uh, of a of a bad element who is trying to influence or motivate using a human analysis a uh, human behavior uh, and then we have an analyst who is trying to stop or identify you know or or uh, uh, gather that information that how do we stop them so this and how do we do it we do it by using and applying machine learning natural language understanding uh, to compress weeks of, of data gathering and analysis since there is huge amount of uh, data the, what the platform does is it it, it 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 filters that macro level of data to micro level of data which exactly an investigator needs based on the objective of his investigation now that is very important there are hundreds of gbs of data but these are useless i only want about 1 gb of data which is very useful to me for my purpose of investigation and each investigation is unique in nature so that has to be done because then there are algorithms at play which will work on that data so the first step is to identify and you know get that data which is very relevant so the system has the ability ability to do that now once we get the data we can you know identify alarming ideologies the analyst can identify the top profiles uh, it gives you know uh, actionable insights through knowledge discovery which is a very important term now uh, in cognitive computing because there is so much of data and we don't know what we get out of that data so that knowledge discovery is very important so this is what this platform does uh, to investigate an individual a group or a topic now the second part of the platform is voyager check uh, this is an ai driven automated assessment platform that can answer predefined questions in real time by harnessing public avail publicly available unstructured data now this is a very important tool uh, that can be used by analysts in law enforcement agencies because it's a potential risk assessment tool that enables users to identify potential threat for example uh, if there is a organization of national importance or strategic importance for example i'm talking about a nuclear power plant there are about 3000 workers uh, who work in that nuclear power plant what it takes only an email and a phone call a random phone call to just say and you know uh, there is a bomb threat that is happening within this nuclear power plant and everything goes haywire 
it takes a lot of time to do all checks and all. With the kind of security arrangements we have across these uh, organizations of national import, very difficult to infiltrate somebody from outside. So what we are here, uh, this platform allows is to understand uh, and analyze uh, probably the profiles of all social media profiles of all the workers and the employees of the organization. Seconds, uh, and, and what does they uh, and what kind of risk? It helps uh, the law enforcement agencies to answer specific questions they want to understand. For example, in this case, is any employee getting influenced by any external uh, malicious, uh, you know, non-state actor who is trying to, you know, motivate him for doing some uh, unusual violent act? And this kind of information, uh, you know, uh, this system runs that check over the social media profiles of all info, all the employees within few minutes, and it, it drives out profiles uh, and segregate profiles based on the outer. For example, if you are checking 1,000 profiles, the top there are these 10 profiles uh, who who shares the content, who have their social network connected to uh, identified, uh, you know, uh, um, extremist ideology propagators. And it's questions like uh, somebody is sharing, liking, tagging the violent content. And this is the profile which needs to be investigated. The system based on its intelligence will tell. Uh, in other cases, the system will tell that these, for example, these are eight other profiles who are in also touched with the same kind of propaganda, you know, uh, propaganda profiles or accounts. Uh, they share, they interact with them, but not at that level. So th these are profiles which can be deep dive or investigated further. Uh, there are pro profiles which are green. It is also very useful for risk assessment of workforce. So this is the second part. Uh, using human behavior and with the data that is available, uh, we can uh, you know risk assess this. How we do it? We are going to see it in the new scale. Now the last and the third part, uh, the Voyager vision, what we call. Uh, now this. Uh, this is an investigation platform for visual data, providing automatic, automated insights on connections and relationships based on uh, visual indications found in image. Uh, the, 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 the technology enables the uh, analyst to quickly, you know, uh, find specific patterns, relationship alerts uh, using visual images. So uh, the, the sample uses of these kind of technologies are in identifying, you know, key figures in protests. For example, there are some vandalizing happen, vandalizing happen, happening by, you know, um, crowds uh, during this coronavirus pandemic. So who are those people? If, if they, uh, uh, you know, through visual recognition, this can be identified. For example, you can analyze gangs or criminal networks from images at scale, huge number of images, uh, and then you can understand relationships about a target. Uh, significant relationship through interact interaction recognition and then facial recognition, object recognition, all these kind of features. Uh, and the most important of all is, you know, the watch list integration. So every law enforcement agency, enforcement agency has a, you know, um, database of uh, individuals who are on watch list. So just integrating this watch list within the technology will help identify these uh, 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 these uh, uh, these individuals within the crowd. So, so overall, if I talk about in a holistic manner from an investigation perspective, from a you know uh, uh, human behavior analysis perspective, we have uh, there technology available to in it was about identifying a threat, detecting a threat whether in the form of an organization or an individual or a group of organization, a potential threat. Now, uh, what we propose is once that threat has been identified, how do we, you know, uh, 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 how, how do we uh, identify as part of investigation the real life identity, location and content control uh, uh, of, of those threats to, you know, take uh, the investigation further. Since uh, this session is all about human behavior, I will just touch on these and then I will move to uh, the phase one again with a case study. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is uh, once based on the human behavior specific uh, like uh, analysis of a target and his social sphere, we identify target uh, and probably his uh, you know uh, additional uh, accounts uh, and then based on technology. 
technology today in the world uh, and also with the lot of databases that are available to law enforcement agencies in the world we can you know uh, create and match the social activity uh, the internet activity uh, through you know um uh, through his social profile and 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 can take further on the uh, on our investigation now this helps in us in you know precise getting precise identification of our anonymous profiles and then some of local activity and global activity like the example i started initially why are people searching about you know um, uh, cheap tickets to uh, syria so that's one If that happens then we have some uh, the phase 3 moves on to interception where in india talking about you know uh, uh, infiltrating into uh, in, into the accounts of uh, social media accounts of the you know um, of the of the target for example uh, with the with the with, with the uh, general from a social media to a kyc detail uh, to uh, infiltrating to a probably a, a telegram group Uh, uh and then uh, after infiltration pulling out all that data for again uh, further analysis within the system uh, so so that is a three way approach for probably we are you know uh, proposing uh, to investigate uh, uh, a, a case uh, from a human uh, behavior perspective and how we will do it now uh, will will go through so this is what is uh, phase 3's last output is nucleic inflection and extrapolation there from tactical solutions i'll not talk about much about them uh, now what we what we are going to do whatever we have shown you through as a part of presentation we're going to show you as a case study which we have uh, done a local post study on trivandrum airport wherein we are trying to identify threats of automated real time analysis of suspects at mass uh with ai driven platforms now uh for this study uh, what are the objectives of so objectives of uh, the study for us were identify employees who might pose a threat within a airport environment and the method methodology is to analyze behavior and key social aspects trace association with extremists direct or indirect if any for this uh, i would like to again uh, hand over it back to my colleague uh, tal uh, to demonstrate a part of the solution live to the audience uh, tal if you can uh, uh, i am handing over the uh, stage to you uh, you can now switch on to the uh, live case we are yes. uh, going to discuss yes thank you i, I will to to address also some of the questions that i've noticed here on the chat so i uh, there's a question about the uh, vpn proxies and things like that um so what this solution comes with with a tailored a uh, collection engine that uh, is 100% um given and taken uh, care of by us by the company no need for you the customer to deal with any vpns or proxies or ip settings or port settings uh no need to use avatars if that is something that you do as well to groom them and to grow them and to you know try to avoid them being uh, detected and things like that our uh, mechanism for a uh, collection is also using ai is looking very very broad around the person around the target or around the topic like anything said and gathering collection from a very wide uh, array of uh, locations in order to be able to reconstruct things about a person that he may have tried to hide anyway I can give you an example of like a private friends list this is something that the system is can collect but no need for any avatars like I said by the way the system is not doing any hacking or any deciphering or any breaking into uh we do not do that uh, in any way um what we do like I said is we use our algorithms to collect information in such a broad way that the system can understand the connections and the friends of a person for example if my friends list is private but uh, a nitin's friends list is not and i appear there then the system will be able to find that uh, and things like that so 
the system collection is very, very strong and independent and also saves you the work. If you have this uh, today, that would save you the work of exactly what you asked, of defining proxies and VPNs and ports and IPs and so on and so on. Uh, another question here is what about networks? Am I, well, we, there's a list of networks we support. I can show it to you all as well, but it's all the big social medias, of course, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, um, uh, Medium, Cascus, and more and more and more. And also things that are, like I said, are not exactly social, classic social medias, but like a Tumblr, VMO, YouTube, uh, Pinterest, and so on. Telegram, uh, we also do things like uh, Darknet, uh, but uh, everything is incorporated in the same platform. That is one of the strengths of the system. Um, another question. Uh, I'll do one, more, one or two more questions and then we'll go back to the system, okay? So does the law prevent you from gathering personal information? That's a very good question. Um, there is GDPR regulation in Europe, uh, which is already implemented. And I'm not sure what the legal status of that is in India, but I can tell you that this system is GDR, GDPR compliant. In what way? Uh, GDPR, one of the main things there is that you cannot collect information about innocent people. You cannot collect information about anybody you want only about people that have any a specific, uh, like a, something suspicious or something that has come up. So what I'm going to show you in a minute, the next system is Voyager Check, it's how you can assess people without collecting information about them. And you look at the information and you don't, you don't save it. That's the problem with the GDPR. You don't save it, you're not like putting it in a database, you're dumping it right away. And only the ones that have like a red flag about them that have something suspicious about them, only about those you have a small about amount of information uh, to understand why that flag is red, and then you can keep on the investigation on your own. So I will show you the example, and then I think it'll be more clear. <clears throat> okay. Um, lots more information, uh, questions here are coming. I'm glad you guys are interested. Uh, so let me <clears throat> just quickly go and show you the, the solution. <clears throat> and the, the, the platform that I meant to show you, and then we can answer some more questions. Uh, how can we interface to national database? A, API, ICD, many ways you can interface to a natural database. It's something that we do often. <clears throat> Just another question there I quickly answered. Uh, okay, so let's go to the system. I'll share my screen. System is called Voyager Check, and it's an automated a risk assessment system. That means that you can put in here in this system any person or any amount of people and get a quick indication about their behavior. For example, in this, a, one of the scenarios we have a, is uh, regarding terrorism. Does this person have any relation to terrorism? This is the question that the system comes to, uh, to answer in this demo. The idea of the system is to have an easy input. All you need to give the system is a list of names, a list of emails, a list of phone numbers, and the system will find information about them and give you an easy output, a green flag, an orange flag, or a red flag. So easy input, easy output, and behind the scenes, the AI algorithms are giving you uh, assessment, like a score about a person, does he have, does he show inclination in his behavior towards, in this demo case, terrorism? But we also can do this about drug trafficking, human trafficking, pedophilia, tax evasion, money laundering, and this, this uh, can go on and on, and there's many different questions that Voyager Check can answer about a person. So uh, in this demo, we have put in some of the uh, Trivandrum Airport employees. Uh, uh, just for the sake of the, the demo, uh, you can see maybe in, uh, on the screen here, the number, there's 81 uh, people that we have uh, 
that we have in the system. You upload the file of 81 people at the same time, or you can do it one by one. It depends on the scenario you are working at. Let's say you have a critical infrastructure like an airport that you want to assess the employees. Instead of doing the screening once every two years, you do it every three months or every day, it's up to you. You can do it in one click of a button, you know, 5,000 people. And that assessment takes about one minute. And then you get these flags uh, that you see here, a uh, green, orange, and I'll show you a red one in a minute as well. Uh, so the again, the concept of the system is to give you a quick idea of what person might be uh, introducing a risk to your uh, facility. Another scenario could be, for example, on the border control, also of an airport or of a land border, people that are coming in, every person, when he gives you your passport, you can have an assessment of him and get a quick flag, green, red, or orange, about any operational question you want. Terrorism, like I said, drug trafficking, pedophiles, and so on and so on. So the, the system can really empower you to uh, a, like scan or filter out of the thousands of people, which ones are the more inclined to be uh, in that specific behavior that you are looking for. So like I said, we have here 81 uh, people that we have uh, assessed in the airport for Kerala. And you can see the ones that are green. Obviously, most of them are going to be green. If I filter out all the cleared ones, then 74 are cleared ones. That makes sense. You're, you're assessing 1,000 people. You're not expecting 900 of them to be terrorists. You're expecting maybe two or three. Uh, to be, you know, inclined to that behavior. And if you go to the ones that are red, then you see there is one uh, profile that is deemed red. Now, before I dive into that profile, I want to explain a few more things about this. So first, let me give a few words, and I hope I don't get too technical, but what is happening here in the background is that, uh, again, you give me a list of names, okay? Here is the input. You give me a list of names. You can have it as a file or a single or a list of emails or phone numbers or any information you have about the person. By the way, like I said, there's also, uh, you can also see CSV file or you can have it connected to a passport scanner, like I said, in an airport uh, border control scenario. Okay, so you give me the, the information and the input is very, like I said, simple, and you get the output, which is also meant to be simple, the flag. But behind the scenes, the system is assessing this person's behavior. So it's collecting all the information about this person very rapidly, okay? Like I said, this whole assessment takes about 60 seconds. Uh, it's collecting all the information, and it's saying, I have now a pattern of this information. Does it fit the pattern that I know of, of, let's say, a terrorist? of a drug trafficker and if yes then a flag comes out red or orange depends how strong that indication is and if not then green and what i said about the gdpr once this guy is green i have no more information about this guy in the system okay i can have it if you want it but right now it's set up to be gdpr compliant so it's like dumping in a sense information about the green guy saying this guy is green and i have nothing else to show you about him um on the on the ones that are red okay and let me filter this out to the ones that are relevant so the ones that came out red from the kerala uh, from the trivandrum airport okay then on him the system is able to show us a little bit of information okay we have a report here and it's giving you some indications why this person has been flagged out some of his uh, like likes and some of the people that he's in contact with, which are a, the reason why he's been flagged as red. Now, what I wanted to show you also is notice this sentence up here, report shows chosen examples based on 9,995 parameters. Also to get an understanding and in the indication of the sizing of the system. Now, I, it's very important for me also to uh, explain that 
these things that you see here, you know, may not be each one of them individually so alarming. You can say, well, I know maybe this uh, uh, Quran daily uh, uh, site or whatever it is, and I'm, uh, it's not that kind of content. But what is important here is the pattern and the system, because, you know, people are not, do not surf in a website that have all the time very explicit names or explicit pictures. You know, there's no website for pedophiles that or you know that is very open and obvious. It's always discreet and you know uh, like subtle names and and innocent sounding names and things like that. So what's important to understand here is that the system is not necessarily even looking at the names here, but looking at the pattern of the data. And he says, I have studied before terrorists, and I have studied before for pedophiles. Doesn't matter, pedophiles is just an example, but in this case, we're dealing with terrorism. I've studied before terrorism, and this is the pattern in the data, and he fits the pattern. This guy has the same, a, like I said, digital fingerprint as a terrorist would have. Now, does this mean 100% that he's a terrorist? No but it's an indication about a person that is worth checking out. Uh, and out of the, for example, if you have a hundred people standing in line coming into the airport, then you can say maybe this one is worth to question a little bit more just to make sure he's not uh, coming with any bad intention. Or in this case, if it's an airport scenario, you can say maybe this guy is worth uh, checking once every, you know, more often, or if, if it's a recruiting process, then you can say, I just won't recruit him in the, in the first place and not have to deal with the uh, possible risk. So there's many different scenarios this can be used. Uh, now, a, a deep dive investigation of this person, MK Faisal, can be done with a different platform, okay, with Voyage Analytics. And you can see the connection between the two systems is very simple and straightforward. Collect in Voyage Analytics, I click this button and this guy will be collected in Voyage Analytics. Before we do that, I want also to say that this system has also a mobile version, a mobile application version. And one of the scenarios for that is policemen on streets can use it. And how can they use it? We have, for like example, a customer that has it with a question regarding drug trafficking and involve, involvement in selling drugs. So a, every police officer can have this on his phone and all he needs to do is to take a picture of the, if he pulls someone, ever, pulls someone over and he's suspicious, suspicious of them, he takes a picture with his phone of their license, their driver's license, and the system extracts the name and the image, collects information about him and gives him the flag about the guy, all this within 60 seconds. Uh, so you can see how quickly and how strong effect it has uh, also in day-to-day -day, uh, you know, law enforcement work. So uh, this guy can be, like I said, collected in a click of a button in Voyage Analytics and for to see more information about him, to see why also the system has flagged him red, and is he really inclined to do any a problematic activity, I would say. A, you can have a further, a deeper analysis of him in that system. So I, we will show you now this guy in Voyage Analytics, and to show you also the capabilities of that system. And for that, I will switch over the controls back to Nitin. So where uh, Tal has left, what we have done in this use case is, uh, yeah. Uh, so, so what we have done here is we have uh, analyzed a group of people very quickly, identify which are the profiles of interest or could be a potential threat. Now the system flagged one profile. Then, as I think it's important also to address what people are asking. Uh, if a person doesn't have any social media, can his information be collected? So the answer is yes. Um, why? For example, we had a, some, well, there are people, of course, that are very discreet on social media specifically. But like I said, we do not only do social media. We do other uh, websites, 
and streaming uh, sites and things like that as well. So there might be information there. And also we have encountered in our experience uh, many cases in which the person itself is not sharing information about him, but others are sharing information about him and he has no control about that in, in any way. And there was a very a famous case in a country in Africa in which a very top discreet general, uh, you know, was persistent on the fact that he doesn't have any social media or any uh, uh, access or any even encounter with any social media. But he had a 12 year old daughter, which she had a simple smartphone. And she took pictures, you know, of their vacations and their traveling, and he was all over the place. So you could really track some of his uh, uh, whereabouts through that. So that is something also that the system can will be able to collect and find as well. Uh, <clears throat> another question, uh, I, and that was one question. The other uh, question here is regarding patterns of flags and things like that. So the flag definition can change over time. Also, it changes geographically because uh, people that you know behave like uh, terrorism is not the same all over the world. I would say like that. So terrorists in uh, Southeast Asia do not do the same thing, and their patterns are not the same as they are in the Middle East. And as time goes by, things all the time change and adapt. So that is also part of the system and. Uh, to be able to be updated uh, to the most current types of behavior. We're good? Yep. Yeah, okay, so like I said, at a click of a button, you can take this account from Voyager Check to Voyager Analytics, okay? And this, in this specific case, it's a Facebook account. And here it is uh, in Voyager Analytics. So. What you see here is how would the profile look like on social media, on, the, uh, on Facebook, without actually being in Facebook. And this is something very important to mention, understand, as you guys already asked me, how are things you know, regarding the collection and VPNs and things like that. So here you can see the result of the collection. I'm not actually in Facebook, I'm in my own URL but it looks like Facebook. The system, like I said, has thousands of different access points and players throughout the internet and different domains. And each one of those players, as we call them, uh, is collecting a very small bit of information and sending it back to the system. And the system in the back end is reconstructing it to make it look like it is a, actually Facebook. So this, if you went to his actual account, this is how it would look like, but we are able to see it uh, without going to Facebook. And this has two main strong uh, advantages. The first one is I don't need to access the internet, so I'm not exposing myself in any way. I'm not a, you know, using an avatar, and then tomorrow he'll have a friend suggestion from the avatar and might get suspicious. Okay, I don't have to manage any proxies or any details or anything like that. It is all completely uh, transparent to me. And the second thing is that it's, it's completely untraceable. There is no way that the target or anyone else that, that this way has been, his data has been viewed can trace back to anyone, back to you as a customer, back to us as a company, nothing like that, because not one single entity has looked at his data. Thousands of singular data points have been collected and each one of them do not leave a trace and the reconstruction is only happening like in the back end, like I said. So you can feel very easily and free to really go into Facebook and go into Instagram and go into all these different social medias that we support without actually uh, needing to access the internet, uh, the social media itself. By the way, in this case, it's Facebook, like you see, but we support, like I said, many, many different ones. And you can see here the full list. If I skipped any when I try to detail them, Twitter, Vcontact is a Russian one, Tumblr, LinkedIn, Weibo is a 
Tina Weibo is the Chinese one, uh, and and more and more. <clears throat> okay, so this is this is the real time display. This is how it looks like now. And now I have in near my tab all these different uh, uh, information that has been collected about him. So the first thing is post. Okay, and you can immediately see that the system has collected 2,132 posts of this guy. So, a few things about this. First of all, this, the collection is unlimited. So if he had 200 or 2,000 or 20,000 posts, it doesn't matter. The system would be able to collect them all. And uh, the system is also giving you a few analytical capabilities on top of the actual collection. And why the main reason, of course, is because you know you nobody wants to read 2,132 posts. That's crazy. So we you can go. Uh, and you don't have to go one by one, but you can search keywords. The first thing you can do is use what we call lexicons. Okay, lexicons are predefined list of words. Let's say I want to see if this guy is you know, talking like about terrorism, talking about jihad, talking about extremism and things like that. So I have a bunch of keywords like, you know, mujahideen and kafir and this and that, that I can search and I can search them all at the same time and a click of a button, I will show you. So you can do this about drug trafficking, you can do this about any pedophiles or anything like that, even a list of, let's say, like cities, domains, it is used in the website, do you have any phone numbers, things like that. So I will use the lexicon jihad to see out of these 2,100 posts, does anybody, any one of them relate to jihad? Because that is also, you remember, what is the investigation that we started about this guy? Because we found him through Voyager Check that he was kind of got, got a red flag. So you can see the things that are marked and they're all also in different languages. This is in Arabic. Uh, and also it searches the comments as well. So somebody commented something that the system has a, a flagged out, <clears throat> okay? And also m multiple, multiple languages. Let me see if, like here, Mujahideen, he mentioned, okay? By the way, so you can see that there's 14 posts around a jihad-related terminology which is quite a bit. You can see he's talking about this, uh, these things, so maybe it is worth to looking in to it, but maybe, you know, it also can be innocent as well. This is where the analyst, you know, comes in and to have a, to create a report and then to have a decision within an organization. Is this person, you know, uh, introducing a risk? Yes or no. Um, Within every post, of course, you can have it translated to any language. I translate to English, of course, but you can see the, the list of languages we support is very long. We support about uh, 60 languages, if I remember correctly, the, the full number. Um, other things that are available here are searching by emojis, for example. And this is a become more important because people sometimes don't say words what they think but they write about it like what are they angry about what do they want to you know what do they want to explode they're like what do we, what do we, with the with the bomb emoji and things like that so that is also a capability within the system uh, states post things like that uh, which is i won't go over to now but all these different analytical capabilities <clears throat> an additional thing is by impact you can see all these one percent so the system is also giving every post a score, like how viral it is. And 100% is the most viral post of this guy. So you can see this post of his has 2,800 800 likes. So maybe not internationally viral, but in the context of this guy, it is his most viral post. You can also view all his media, all his pictures, his uh, videos, uh, everything like that. See, uh, you know, uh, what he's talking about, who he is, and you know, also pictures of him, of him himself to make sure, you know, you have an understanding of who he is a, as an individual. And finally, also locations on a map, okay, posts that have a location in them, and you can see 
and most of them are from well I'm not very familiar with the uh, India geograph geography so I have to uh, excuse me but you can see there are many many posts here with many different locations and any one of them is also clickable you can open them and see what they are and who they are and things like that so that's about the the post uh, and you can see that we have, have established that he does have some interest in some uh, relevant terminology. The second tab is interest. And here, these are like groups he's part in, pages he's in, events he attended, and apps that he has. Uh, and this is all also searchable with like a lexicon or with anything like that. So you can search all, all of these to filter out the ones that are more interesting for your investigation. With your permission, I'm going over that a little quicker. And I'm going here to show you the topology. So the topology are all of his uh, friends and connections, okay? And, um, and you can see that there are 2,023 friends that the system have had. And the system is every a node here is a person, okay? Every, every dot, no matter what color it is, is a person that you can click on with a profile that you can go and investigate uh, who it is, okay? And, and the system is doing here a few things for you. First thing, it's doing a uh, calculation on how well does this guy know each one of these people. And you can see that there's a relationship strength bar. And I can play with it to see who are the people that are his best friends, like his best connections, because they have the most common friends with him and the most interactions with him. Another thing that you can do is that you can view like statistics about his, uh, his friends all the people that he knows. So you will see like information, where did most of them go to education, the University of Kolkata, where most of them are at work, okay? Most of them work in self-employed or Dawa calling to Allah, Facebook, probably not true, uh, not work Yorkie and so on. Countries, most of them are from India, quite a few are from the UAE, from Saudi Arabia, Qatar, uh, and more and more information. So you can see how easily you can uh, slice and dice, you can say through the information and find a uh, relevant things. And you can also search here any keyword, any name, any location. Uh, like you want to search, does you know anybody in Syria, for example? So yes, there's one person that he knows from Syria. Uh, <clears throat> and just by the picture, this person may just be saying that about himself. Uh, but the system, by the way, can also detect if somebody is telling the truth about the, their location, uh, yes or no. And we'll, if we have time, we'll show you how it does that. So what I want to show you here is some of the automated insights that the system can give you. And the first one is ghosts. Okay, so ghosts are the green ones. Okay, there's one here. These are the ones, people, that are additional profiles of the same person. Um, that means that a, the system by, is, what, how does this work? It's, again, using AI to detect the patterns of the data of a target. So it's collected all this information about this person and then it's saying who else has the same digital fingerprint of mommy of five stars okay and then they found two additional uh, profiles that meet this criteria okay one of them is this one and the other one is this one uh, now the <clears throat> the the strength of this capability is Think about it, if this guy is trying to hide his identity and some profiles are trying to hide identity, you will be able to find like an additional profile of the same person that in many cases is a real profile, his real name and his real image and things like that. And you can see who he really is. And that is very, something very, very strong. And also maybe you'll find additional profiles that he is operating. 
So using the AI uh, human uh, you know, uh, behavior analysis, you're able to find more uh, profiles of the same person. Sometimes they're not a profiles of him, but somebody very close to him, like husband, wife, brother, mother. But the bottom line is, if you don't know who this guy is, it's always good to start with a ghost and investigation. The second thing is, uh, the pink ones are top connection, the people he talks with the most. Uh, the orange ones are people we investigated in the past, and you can see some of the labels on those uh, people. These are people that have been investigating the system. And mediators, I want to show you in the next screen. Mediators are people that are very strongly connected within a specific social circle. So the system is able to collect also his social circles like my friends and my friends' friends, and see which ones of my friends know each other. And that's why how these clusters are created. So everyone has social clusters in their life, <clears throat> like friends from high school, friends from work, friends from college, and, you know, family members, and things like that. And they know each other, so they would create a cluster. So this is what you see here and what is presented. And mediators, are the people that are most strongly connected within a cluster. So if this was like his, uh, his friends from college, then the yellow guys are the most popular kids in class. You can see there, they know the most people. And if this was a criminal organization, then the yellow ones are the people that are like on the top of the food chain. You can see also when I hover over this cluster that the system is giving me some automated insights. Again, that is part of the, the whole idea. It's giving some automated insights. Why are this cluster together? Why do these people know each other? And it's, you see they're a study in the University of Kolkata. So <clears throat> that is uh, of one of the possibilities why this cluster uh, looks as it does. Because these people know each other, that's a fact. The question is, why do they know each other? So probably because they went to the same university together. And you can hover between every other cluster and see other things like, why, are they, why is this a cluster? So maybe because they're all originally from the same place, also studied in the same place, or they live in the same place currently, and so on. So this is how you can find also clusters, you know, like of family members and uh, things like that. So this is how you can also find like a cluster of maybe a criminal networks and seeing if he's trying to affect like his work environment. One of these clusters is probably full of airport employees. Maybe he's trying to, you know, uh, uh, propagate his uh, ideological ideas within his work environment as well. So that is that screen. And there's a few more things here, but I'm skipping for now. The final screen I want to show you is this one. This is called TNT, but what it really means is hidden connection. Who is this guy connected to that is not directly connected to them, but uh, through like a third party? So you could see, excuse me, all the people in white are identified individuals uh, that were investigated in the past for different reasons, okay? Um, uh, and you can see how are they connected to the target, okay? So for example, this account, which is an ISS Jihad supporter in India, he is connected to Faisal, not directly, but through four people, okay, through these four people. So do they know each other? Maybe on the basis of four people, not quite, but you can understand that he's connected to many people that we have investigated in the past, around extremism as well. Uh, something, some other accounts around extremists and so on and so on. So you can see how he, you can detect also kind of his outer uh, hidden connection that he might be trying to hide through the system. And an additional thing you can see here is the blue nodes are people you have not investigated in the past. But look how many people he knows that we, we have investigated, other people related to extremism. So if he knows so many, uh, he might be in the, involved as well. And by the way, circles are people, and square and suitcases 
are like uh, pages and groups in Facebook, okay? So not like a specific person, but like a page or a group in Facebook. So of course, we are able to collect pages and groups and analyze them as well. So this is how you can expose uh, different uh, business information. And you can see like some of the people that he's connected to indirectly, some ISIS uh, here, another ISIS account here, and Salafi ISIS from UK, and an additional Trivandrum Airport employee, which we looked up, not suspicious maybe. And, and the list goes on and on. You can just look at all these uh, jihad-related accounts and so on and so on. So there is a vast uh, amount of data pointing that this guy might be introducing a risk to uh, his environment. And this is, this is a demo, but this guy is real. I mean, these, these uh, people that I showed you in Voyager Check are people that really work in the airport. This is not made up. Uh, so you can understand how easily you can find real information and real insights about a person. And also you can find, I didn't show you, I didn't show you, but you can also find his phone number and email and contact uh, details and address and things like that in order to establish, you know, who he is and where, how you can uh, uh, find him. And the final two tabs here are a uh, report. Okay, one, one of them is a fully automated report that's created by the system and generating some general insights about him, okay? Uh, and the other one, you can see found some uh, information about him, some family members as well. Uh, and the other one is a more user report, like an analyst report you can put inside any of the information I w you saw today, like about the, how it is about, his education, uh, anything from his topology, any of the posts, and let's say just like the 10 newest ones, and then a click of a button, you can create this uh, report. And of course, you can edit it, you can add pictures, add tables, export it to PDF, send it by email, have it printed, anything you want this report, you can see is created within a few seconds. Uh, and you can really do with whatever you want with this reporting tool in order to have that report as comprehensive as you would like. So with that, I will finish, okay? There's many more capabilities of the system that we didn't express. And for example, one of them is the profile finder. You give me a name or a phone number and image and I will find social media accounts of the person that you want me to. And group analysis, and there's many, many, many additional things that can be done in the system. But I, I hope that today you understood the, the, how, the power of using AI. That's what I was our emphasis for today, uh, to understand how you can use pattern recognition and AI to generate really good and meaningful intelligence in a few clicks of a button. And like you see what I did here, was not complicated. I didn't have to dig down too deep. I'm using basic functions, uh, easy to use, simple system. And the, the background, the AI is doing all the, all the smart uh, insights and doing all the massive uh, crunching of data for, for us, for you, for the user. Uh, so I think with that, we can finish. Maybe I'll just answer a few more questions. Uh, we finish in five minutes, if I understand correctly. Uh, so I will just answer maybe a few more questions, and then we can conclude. If anybody, if anybody wants to ask a verbal question, they, they feel free. Uh, <clears throat> so and let me go over to some of the questions and see. I think I'm a couple of questions, and so that we can actually wind it up. It's better to uh, get questions from the chat box rather than you know people asking uh, questions at the same time. Will be okay for you? Okay, sure. Yeah, and I see also that uh, my colleagues here are answering some of the questions um, in the social media. So 
I see also, I, I, well, I would like to man mention one thing though that uh, maybe someone asked here regarding coronavirus and, and COVID-19 in general. So this system was also, can be also used for coronavirus related issues. And uh, we have cases in which we have found like, uh, you know, people that are, you know, infected and you can analyze their social circles to see who is potentially also infected and to be able to trace the virus through, you know, uh, social circles like families and uh, workplaces and things like that, uh, neighborhoods, to make sure that uh, you contain and understand uh, the spread of the virus in your environment. We also have cases, you know, of like people that are supposed to be in quarantine and then violated the quarantine and you can see where who, where they were and who were they in contact with who may also need to go into quarantine. And also cases, things like uh, people that are selling fake vaccines on a dark net. So you can actually find, you know, posts that are selling fake vaccines and then find who is the people behind them, find the real, uh, the real criminals, you could say, that are selling the fake vaccines. Uh, so that is also a word I wanted to say about uh, that. <clears throat> so uh, a few more questions. Uh, are there any instances or examples of false flagging and how do you encounter such cases? Well, that's a good question. So there is uh, a threshold in the background of the system. You can, be, you can say, push it around a bit to uh, give an uh, indication uh, how to the system, how much red flags do you want? Like, do you want a red flag only when it's 100% sure, or do you want it when it's, you know, like a 50-50 case? So some customers say, give me the red flags only when it's 100% sure, and some customer says, when there's the slightest doubt, give me the flag, because I want to know even about the slightest doubt. So the system can be calibrated by the user, by, the, by you, by the customer, to your specific needs, uh, how would you like to, you know, be warned about individuals? <clears throat> uh, what else do we have here? Oh, thank you. I see it. many compliments on the session. Thank you very much. So I think I'll take one more uh, question. Uh, um, let me find one. Uh, What's the achievement rate of Voyager check in preventing the potential threat in national and international security? Well, I don't have any statistics to share, but I can tell you that uh, the, with Voyager check, customers have been really able to detect threats that have not been able to detect before and to stop things before they actually occur. This is really, really preventive. Because, you know, people don't become radical and they're not born radical. It's something that, like for terrorism, it's a process that happens over time. So they assess, you know, like say people that work for a critical infrastructure, let's say for a power plant. You see they're all green, they're all green, they're all green. And suddenly one person becomes, you know, they're assessing them every, let's say, a month. Uh, one person becomes orange, he becomes orange, he's still orange, he's still orange, and now suddenly he becomes red. So then you can go talk to him, even help him, you know, before he does something to the power plant or the places he works, help him also in his personal life. Maybe there was, you know, some romantic breakdown in the background that made him, you know, go down this road and things like that. So it's really preventive in that way that you can help also the people, but also help your organization to have stronger security and feel more safe. Um, okay, I think we will uh, conclude. Uh, Deb, do you want to add anything? Nitin? Yeah, hi, uh, this is Nitin. I'm, I'm so sorry because of technology, you know, sometimes we, have, we cannot control that. So I'm back now. So if there are any questions, uh, we are open. Uh, I see we are at end of our time, uh, but in any case, yes. uh, if there are some relevant use cases and demos you would like us, uh, uh, we can, you know, uh, we present to you in further webinars or sessions. So 
if there are any questions uh, and also i would before we end we i would like to listen to few of the you know somebody's like the three questions i asked about you know what uh, human behavior since there are so many of you know experts on this and scientists on human behavior so how the world is changing and what should we expect as a tech, as technology people you know what's the future you know uh, and there are if there are any questions to our side we are, we are happy to answer yeah well somebody came online and said about questions that they they write them in the chat so i've been answering the questions in okay. the chat okay sure thank uh, you and of course like nitin said uh we are very open you know for further discussion and for additional information and demos and please feel free to contact us uh, yeah, I believe you have Nitin's contact now, and, and also Deb, and also our partners who have been kind enough to uh, arrange this uh, webinar as well. Thanks, Carl. Uh, Nitin, uh, we, if not, no more questions, we'll move on to the you know, closing thing. Uh, it was a great session. Uh, I'll, I request Dr. Lancy, sir, to you know, talk a few words about the session. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much for your participation and your interest. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Nissan and Tower. It's a great talk. Though a behavior psychologist, I never thought that the technology could so go ahead in such a way. I think uh, all the participants, I think there are more than 130 participants were there. I think they really got a lot of insight into the digital forensics, how to track criminals using behavioral sciences and its application. I highly appreciate the talk and uh, thank you very much and we expect more from you, sirs.